fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty Ohio silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor, General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Hello, friends. This is The Lone Ranger. I'd like you to listen to something. All over the country, and that is your question. How you, how you do it is the question. And here's one that I've had that these people have to say. Oh, we need that. Do, 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 and okay. Okay. You know, that's right. People in various parts of the country have different accents, perhaps, or dress a little differently. But the ones with plenty of drive, the go getters, have one thing in common. They're careful about their diet. They see to it that they eat a good, honest breakfast every day. And a breakfast built around wheat couldn't be better for you. Wheat is real man food. So, bear in mind. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Lone Silver. The commanding officer at Fort Stockton walked the floor in his headquarters office as he talked to his aide, Captain Elmore. Captain Elmore, the situation is grave. Very grave indeed. The massacre of our detachment of troopers is the last straw. But, Colonel Lyford, what more can we do? Even the couriers we've sent asking for reinforcements have been intercepted, and the Pony Express can't get through. That's just it, Captain. We couldn't hold this fort against those Indians if they decide to attack. The only thing I see to do is abandon the fort before it's too late. Abandon the fort? But, sir, have you forgotten the settlers who've moved inside the stockade for safety? We couldn't leave them to their fate at the hands of those Apaches. Mm, that's true. That's true. Those settlers do present a problem. But by heaven, we must get word down to Fort Lancaster somehow. Those Apaches must have spies everywhere. They seem to know every move we make. Colonel, why not let me try to get through? It's our only chance of survival. What makes you think you might succeed where all of us have failed so far? I know this territory well, and I know the ways of the Indians. What do you say, sir? Well, all right, Captain. Start out at once and try to reach Fort Lancaster. We'll have to keep our eyes open, Tonto. From all reports, this is the territory in which the Apaches are on the warpath. That's right, Kimasabi. Them say... Apache make many raids, kill plenty of people. From what we have heard, those raids are planned. The same leaders behind them all. Their purpose seems to be to get horses, guns, and ammunition. Maybe that right. Kimisabi, Tonto. Cloud of dust come over rise and distance. Someone's coming this way. I'll turn off into the arroyo until he passes. Come on, Tonto. Up, scout. Easy, boy. Easy, easy now. Now, easy. Him not see us. Here he comes now. Uh, him coming over rise. What? Him wear uniform. An army officer. But look, Tonto. There's a feather in his cap. Ah, eagle feather. Why him wear that? That's what I'd like to know. It must be riding from Fort Stockton. Ah, 
It's against army regulations for an officer to wear anything in his uniform except the official insignia and decorations. I oh, know. Let's trail that man for a short time. His life's in danger in this territory. Here, Tonto, then turned off the trail. But we see other hoof prints. Look like marks of uh, Indian ponies came with Sami. They must have taken him prisoner. Oh, it's not like Apache on warpath take prisoner. Them kill from ambush. Strains them not kill officer. Because he is an officer, they may hold him as a hostage. Oh, maybe that right. What we do now, Kimasami? The trail leads toward the foothills. We'll follow it. All right, let's go. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. For some time, Captain Elmore rode into the hills with the two Apaches. Finally, they entered a secluded valley, and the captain realized he had reached the Apaches' camp. They rode to the center of the camp and pulled ring before the chief's wigwam. The captain stood beside his horse waiting. Then the chief, in full regalia, came from the wigwam, accompanied by a man in the uniform of a Mexican officer. Good afternoon, Major Fernando. Oh, I welcome you, Capitan Elmore. Chief White Deer, this is my friend from Fort Scott. Oh. Oh. Chief White Deer, welcome friend of Great One. Thanks to the eagle feather you gave me, Major, I was able to get here safely. Well, of course, amigo. The chief has ordered all his braves not to harm those who are the eagle feather. You bring news for us? Yes. Good. We are anxious to know conditions there, senor. The colonel has only about 50 troopers. He's been unable to get dispatches through to either Fort Davis or Fort Lancaster. <laughs> bueno, bueno. Yeah. Go on, Capitan. He wanted to abandon the fort and take the men to Lancaster. But I persuaded him he should remain to protect the few settlers within the stock. Ah, you have done well, amigo. And soon your reward will be great. Fort Stockton must be the first to fall, and then Fort Lancaster. Ah, uh, that's right. Once they are in our hands, Forts Quitman, Leighton, and Davis will fall easily, since they will be cut off from the east and are closer to the border. Then what will happen, Major? <laughs> uh, amigo, the American nation will think all this is just an Indian uprising. They will not realize until I move in my rebel soldiers from the mountains across the border that I, Juan Fernando, have moved in and conquered the entire territory between the Pecos River and the Rio Grande. Ah, the Great One will rule land justly and treat Apaches as brothers. But of course, of course. Now, when do you plan to send the Apaches against Fort Stockton? At dawn tomorrow, perhaps. Then, before the news reaches Fort Lancaster... We shall strike there. Chief White Deer, have Apache Braves ready to attack. See, si, that is good. And now, uh, let us go into the wigwam to discuss the plans in the face. Yes, but there was something different from other men in uniforms. The eagle feather he wore in his cap. 
Oh, that's right. Maybe Eagle Feather, worn by a white man, mean Apache not shoot him. I think we've hit it. Tonto, don't you usually carry an extra feather or two in your saddlebag? Uh, we have Eagle Feather. Here, you take him. Good. We're right. This feather should guarantee my safety on the trail to Fort Stockton. I know you head for Fort Lancaster and tell the commandant there about the Apache encampment. Me tell him. Adios, Toto. I'll wait at Fort Stockton for you to return. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Jenny is ten, and is she good? She's skip rope champ of the neighborhood. She's so quick because she knows she's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got gold power. There she goes. She's feeling her Cheerios. 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 That makes sense. Try Cheerios, the wonderful oat cereal that's shaped like a little letter O, and you'll agree. You'll like that delicious toasted oat flavor, and Cheerios is ready to eat. Just pour out a big bowl full, add good fresh milk, dig in, and start getting your go power. Because a Cheerios breakfast is full of vitamins, proteins, and minerals. And those are the good things you need to help build red blood, healthy bodies, and strong muscles. So enjoy your breakfast every day with delicious Cheerios and milk and get that good go power. Then folks will say... She's feeling her Cheerios. Now to continue. After seeing the Apache camp, the Lone Ranger and Toto separated. The Indians started for Fort Lancaster, while the masked man headed for Fort Stockton. It was dusk when the corporal of the guard knocked on the door of the colonel's office. Come in. All right inside, you. Thanks. Colonel, we halted this masked man at the gate. He insisted on seeing you. Great day. I've never been so glad to see anyone as I am to see you, my friend. Hello, Colonel Lyford. But, Colonel, sir, the mask. I know all about it, Corporal. This man is a good friend of mine. You and the guards may leave now. Yes. I don't know how you got through. No one from here has been able to make it. Let's sit down. Thanks, Colonel. I'm worried about the situation here. I have only 50 men. The Apaches knew that. They'd surely attack. I'm sure they do know by now, Colonel. That might be. They seem to know every move we've made recently. What if Captain Elmore gets through to Fort Lancaster? Captain Elmore? Yes. Came here a couple of months ago as my aide. He knows this territory well. I see. And he left for Fort Lancaster earlier today? That's right. Took a dispatch to Colonel Darby. Colonel Darby won't receive it, sir. What makes you say that? Do you think he was ambushed by Apaches? After all, if you managed to get He through... wasn't ambushed. I wasn't either. And I believe it was because of this eagle feather here. Yes. I noticed when you removed that feather from your hat. What does that have to do with your getting through? You might say this is the sign of a traitor. Traitor? Oh, come now, my friend. No one can ever say that you're a traitor. I'm talking about Captain Elmore, Colonel. What? Todd and I saw him on the trail. He wore an eagle feather on his hat. He rode for some distance without harm, and he met two Apaches. What? What happened? They led him to the Apache encampment. Todd and I trailed him. Through my binoculars, I saw the captain talking to the chief and to a Mexican officer. Great day. My own aid, a dirty traitor. That seems to be it. I had a feeling those Apaches had a military man telling them what to do. That Mexican officer must be the man. The fact that your aide went to the Apache camp today might mean the time is near to take the fort. Then you think that they may attack at dawn? I think it's possible, sir. I'll alert the men to do all they can to be ready. What are you going to do? Give you what help I'm able to give, Colonel. If Tano gets through, we have a chance. If he doesn't, well, we'll go down fighting together. That night in the chief's wigwam, Major Fernando was talking to Captain Elmore and Chief White Deer. It is arranged, Capitan, that we attack at dawn. Ah, Apaches take fort. The fort is strong, but with only 50 men and a few panicky settlers to defend it, it shouldn't be long before the Apaches take it. Uh, there, there is a bit of strategy in which you will take part, amigo. What's that? Since we have much more to do before we take the territory, it is necessary that we lose as few braves as possible, no? That's logical, Major. Uh, I knew you would agree, Senor Capitan. Now, here is the part you play. 
At dawn, we shall be hidden just over the ridge in front of the fort. When I give the signal, you are to gallop toward the fort, pursued by three or four braves, who will shoot arrows over your head or to the side so as not to hit you. But why do you want me to do that? Do you not see, amigo? The guards at the fort will think you have returned and that you are being attacked by a few Indians. They will open the gates to let you in. Then the big attack will take place. All right. I'll see you both in the morning. Good night. See. Hey. Me watch close. Pale face captain have much fear. Maybe him not follow plan. <laughs> yeah, I do not intend to give him a chance, Chief White Deer. He served his purpose. He knows too much about our future plans, so he does not take the chances that he might talk, no? No. Uh, it's better him die. That is really my plan. See that you pick braves to follow him. Braves who will not miss Chief White Deer. Uh. Before the pale faced Capitan reaches gate of force, the arrows of Apache Braves will silence his lips forever. Meantime, during the night, there was great activity inside the fort as everyone made ready for the expected attack. Dawn found the colonel and the lone ranger standing on the rampart near the big gates, looking out over the slope that stretched up to the ridge beyond. The colonel spoke. Everything out there seems peaceful enough. I've seen it that way before, colonel, when an attack was about to begin. Yes, yeah, so have I. Well, the sun's just over the horizon. If anything is going to happen, it should start soon. I was hoping Toto and the men from Fort Lancaster would arrive before daylight. I don't like to dash your hopes, my friend, but... Well, look, someone galloping towards the fort. Several Indians are following him, Colonel. Look. Great day, that's Captain Elmore. Let's get down to the gate. Quickly, the Colonel and the masked man went down the ladders to an opening in the stockade near the gates from which they could watch. Where the shooting arrows at him. Tie them back, men! Use your guns! are turning back. Look, the captain has been hit by an arrow. He's fallen from his horse. Call on a short distance from the gate. I must bring that man in. Tell your men to cover it with gunfire. Then, cover the man's man and go through the gate. The Indians will be close enough to kill him in a minute. As the colonel and the men watched tensely, the lone ranger ran with his heavy burden toward the open gate. Another minute and he'd be inside. Then he stumbled and fell. He should come for Close the gate before it's too late! Look! Super Fort Lancaster! As the Lone Ranger fell, he realized that it meant death. Grabbing his guns, he raised on his elbows and emptied them at a uniformed figure and a few Apaches who had just moved within range. At that moment, the Lone Ranger, too, heard the welcome sound of the bugle. Hello. Hello, the troopers. Heavens, he's safe. For another moment, the masked man lay watching as the troopers moved in and fought the Apaches, whose only thought now seemed to be to get away. Men poured through the open gates of the fort. As the colonel and some of the men came running toward him, the Lone Ranger stood up. My friend! My friend, are you all right? Yes, thanks, Colonel. See the commandant, Fort Lancaster riding this way. We'll all go into the fort. Bring Captain Elmore inside, men! <laughs> quarters which the colonel and the captain had shared. Several men stood around the cot on which Captain Elmore lay. They listened intently as the captain spoke weakly. I, I'm done for, girl. They plan to kill me. I know that now. It will be all right, Captain. No, no. Anyhow, it's better this way. I don't deserve to live. I was a traitor to my country. I know. My masked friend knew. He... He knew? Yes. He was clever enough to figure out the meaning of the eagle feather. He saw you wearing it. But though he knew, he... He risked his life to save me. He's a brave man and a just one, Captain. That's right, Colonel Darby. But why did he do it? Because he had branded you as a traitor in my presence. 
He felt you should have a chance to vindicate yourself, if possible. I, I never knew any man could be that fine. What, what of Major Fernando? The masked man wounded him. The Major confessed everything and will pay for his crimes. The Apaches will be punished along with their chief. I... I'm sorry about everything. Uh, sorry too late, Captain. An officer who betrays his trust, becomes a traitor to his country, deserves neither sympathy nor forgiveness. I agree, Colonel. The man who tried to save your life, who risked arrows and bullets for you, was willing to believe that he might have been mistaken. It's hard for such as he to concede that any American could be a traitor to these great United States. Uh, tell me, Colonel. Who is he? Who is... Uh, the... The captain is dead, Colonel. And he didn't have the satisfaction of knowing that the great American who risked his life for him is the Lone Ranger. to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.